Hey there and welcome back. Today we will discuss Sneer's two-part fractures in details. Like we've mentioned, two-part fractures have one displaced fragment. They can be displaced surgical neck fractures, which have three subtypes, displaced greater tuberosity, displaced lesser tuberosity, and isolated anatomical neck fractures. Displaced surgical neck fractures are the most common two-part fracture pattern. Near described three different subtypes, angulated type, separated type, and comminuted type. In angulated surgical neck fracture, the fracture is impacted but angulated greater than 45 degrees. In this fracture type, the posterior pearl steel sleeve remains intact, and if left untreated, the residual angulation will cause limitations in elevation and abduction. The second type, which is the separated type, the perostium is completely disrupted and the pectoralis major pulls the shaft fragment anteriorly and medially. The third type is the comminuted type, in which the comminution is seen extending distally from the surgical neck. Moving on to displaced greater tuberosity fracture, it's the second most common two-part fracture pattern and is commonly seen after anterior shoulder dislocation. Hate to break it to you guys, but greater tuberosity fractures is more special than other fracture patterns. If the greater tuberosity is displaced more than 3 mm in overhead athletes or greater than 5 mm in healthy adults, surgical fixation is required. And if you ask why, simply because greater than 3 mm displacement in an athlete may affect rotator cuff tension, and greater than 5 mm may cause impingement. Lesser tuberosity fractures are rare, and isolated anatomic neck fractures are quite rare. 